Let us call upon the name of the Lord. May God's face shine upon us. We light the first Advent candle with the hope and the desire for the coming of the Lord. That may be done now. So we light the first Advent candle with the hope and the desire. So let us pray together. Holy and gracious God, we pray that we light this candle, so too, by the fire of hope be kindled in our hearts. May we hold this hope gently as we are urged to stay awake and be ready for our most amazing event as we prepare to receive the Christ child. May we be ever mindful of our love for you and yours for us. This will keep the flames of hope burning in this Advent season. We pray all this in the name of Emmanuel. Amen.
came to visit us in great humility. That in the last day, when he shall come again in the glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to life and order through him who lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, one God and Lord. reading from the book of Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God, of, of the God of Jacob that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Let us say Psalm 122 together. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with itself to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, the assembly of Israel, to praise the name of the Lord. For there are thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls, and quietness within your towers. For my brethren and companions' sake, I pray for your prosperity because of the house of the Lord our God. I will seek to do you good. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. You know what time it is, how it is now for the moment for you to wake up from sleep. For salvation is never nearer to us now when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the mirror of light. Let us live honestly as in the day, not reveling in drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, 
but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken, and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken, and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, it is good to be with you today and greeting to those who are joining us online. Let us pray. Open our ears, O Lord, to hear your word and know your voice. Speak to our hearts and strengthen our wills that we may serve you today, now, and always. Amen. Please be seated. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! <laughs> Thank you. A week ago we had the last Sunday after Pentecost and we celebrated the culmination of the liturgical year with the Feast of Christ the King, ruler of the universe. Are you celebrating this new year? This new, this new liturgical year? Like my church in St. Paul in, in the desert? Last night they had a silent disco going down Palm Canyon. And I thought, what is a silent disco? So they had these headphones on where they could hear the music and they danced down Palm Canyon. <laughs> now if you did that here in, in uh, Bay City area, Bay Park area here, um, people probably look at you a little strange. But in Palm Springs, it's common. Nothing to see here, folks. Just move along. <laughs> so they, they had a great time doing that and they're celebrating this new year. Now we start the cycle of Advent. It's my favorite season. Going back to my childhood, mom and dad always had a Advent wreath with the candles. The house was decorated in blue and we didn't decorate for Christmas. They were traditionalists. They would decorate on sundown Christmas Eve. How many people remember that? That season. And then we'd leave the tree up and we'd celebrate all the way through Epiphany. And it just, it always brings us memories. So it's an honor to be able to preach for you on this first Sunday of Advent. Advent is a name that's derived from a Latin word for coming. So we know this, um, this season is about waiting. It's a time of preparation and expectation for the coming celebration of the Lord's nativity and incarnation. And also for the final coming of Christ in power and glory, which you'll also hear that term perusia. This season is where we focus on one of the virtues, four of the virtues that Jesus brings us hope, today's candle, love, joy, and peace. So, with Advent, it's a, a, a season of waiting. And, you know, waiting is kind of a, a bad thing for us in our culture. I, I'll, I'll admit to you, my brothers and sisters, I am the most impatient person who has to stand in a line in a grocery store, the bank, you name it. I, I just don't have the patience for waiting. 
In fact, I'll stand in front of the microwave and scream, come on, hurry up. <laughs> so with that, um, we, we, we don't wait impatiently during Advent. But with, we wait with hope, love, joy, and peace. Now, as I was preparing this sermon today, like a good student, I went to my commentaries and to uh, prepare. And so I read this gospel, and all of a sudden, my anxiety level goes up. I mean, like, Jesus is just going to come out of the clear blue and surprise us. And, like, if I need more anxiety in my life right now. You know, and, and, and then when you get to that part, you know, where they, like, like, when's this going to be taken? It's like, are, is he talking about the rapture, which some of our evangelical brothers and sisters ascribe to? But I think there's something more here in this gospel. Yes, he's telling us to be prepared. Because no one knows when Jesus is coming back, the parousia. And he's telling us this. Matthew, when he wrote this gospel, was dealing with a problem in their community. This is some 70 years after, 50, 70 years after the time of Jesus. They thought the return of Jesus was going to be imminent. And so I think Matthew was trying to say, hey, you know what, don't worry about it. Nobody knows the time when Jesus will come. But be, always be prepared. And I think that's a very important thing. So <clears throat> I ditched the commentaries and went to my favorite uh, resource called the Google. So I went to the Google and I asked the Google about this. And, you know, I'm telling you, I find so many good stuff, so much good stuff on Facebook too. So I just want to share this with you this morning. And this was really what helped change my idea of this. The key is noticing. That's Jesus' clear message on this first Sunday of Advent. Stay awake, he says. One way to understand that invitation is, be aware of the new ways that God is at work in your life. And now we'll hear from John the Baptist soon talking about repent, prepare a way for the Lord. And it's, repent is, is kind of a, a translation of metanoia. Um, it's really more about a theological, or a, it's a deeper change that goes in our mind and our heart. And part of that change is noticing that is being open to change itself. Being open to change itself this Advent season. As we start a new liturgical year, are we open to those changes? I know I certainly need to be. This last liturgical year has been a really rough one for me. With school, um, with things going on in my former church, and then starting new in St. Paul in the desert. So I'm hoping for a better liturgical year. But what I think we need to focus on here are those kairos moments. That's what Jesus is talking about. Beware of the kairos moments. Now that word kairos, it comes from the ancient Greek. It's a term that's translated as the right time, the opportune moment to do or say something. But in our New Testament, kairos means the appointed time and the purposes of God. The time when God acts. And I think about that, and I go back and I wonder, hey, when were those times that God broke through in a Kairos moment for me? I invite you to think about those this week as you go through the season of Advent. You know, so many times I treat God like the cosmic butler, you know, always asking God for something. And when do I want it? Being impatient? I want it now. <laughs> I want it now. <laughs> so that's my, my thing. Is like, okay, so I'm asking God. I'm asking God. I'm asking God. And then, in my self-centeredness and selfishness, 
I'm not listening for when God is asking me of something. God asks me, and what do I do? I make God wait. I ignore it. And then I get a really big Kairos moment in my life. And I go, ah, yes, God, I get it. And they come in very surprising moments. When I see somebody helping a homeless person, showing kindness and compassion. A couple weeks ago, I had the I went down to the border uh, of Mexicali, and there's a humanitarian crisis going on. And I met families who are waiting to get their paperwork processed to come to the United States. Their families are ready to sponsor them. And in one shelter, I met a family who's been waiting one month and three days. Literally, in the shelter, they they, they don't go anywhere. They're patiently waiting. And I think about my impatience. So again, I'm going to go back to this. I'm hoping for a better liturgical year. That's what this new year is about for us with Advent. So let's, I'm going to close in prayer here. O God of the universe and wonder, fill our minds, hearts, and actions this season of Advent with hope love, joy, and peace that can only come from you. Amen. Prayers of the people are found on page 9 of your bulletin. God of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, who promised to hear us when we pray to you in faith with thanksgiving. We pray for one another, for our families and friends, throughout whom we learn to love and be loved. Thank you for all who care for us. Give us grace to serve Christ by serving our neighbors and our community loving others as he loves us. We pray for the community, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Susan, our bishop, for all our bishops and other ministers, 
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We thank you for the unfailing love you hold out to everyone in Jesus Christ. Comfort and heal those in sorrow, need, sickness, or any other trouble. Give them courage and hope in their distress, and bless those who minister to them. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We remember with gratitude your many gifts to us in creation and the rich heritage of these islands. Help us and people everywhere to share with justice and peace the resources of the earth. Give wisdom to those in authority ab among us and to all leaders of the nations. Let us bless the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. We pray for your church throughout the world, th thanking you for all who serve Christ and his kingdom. By your spirit, strengthen your people for their work and witness in the world. Unite us in your truth and love, that we who confess your name may also reflect your glory. We pray for the world. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Nippon Seiku Kai in our diocese. We pray for the clergy and the people of Christ the King Alpine. Let us bless the Lord. Thank, Thank us be to God. We remember with thanksgiving all who have died in Christ and we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may enter with them into the unending joy of your heavenly kingdom. Let us bless the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. Merciful God, you look with compassion on all who turn to you. Hear the prayers of your people. We pray for an end to all conflicts everywhere in the world, but especially in Ukraine. For the laying down of arms and finding a path toward peace. Protect your one human family. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit for those who are afflicted with COVID-19 and for those who care for them. Give them courage and hope in your tr their troubles and bring them the joys of your salvation. We also pray for those who through addiction have lost their health and freedom, for those who suffer as a result of another's addiction, for those who minister to and care for them and for an end to the opioid epidemic. Let us pray for healing from the pandemic of racial injustice. Guide, grant that we may have faith and that we may by your grace receive through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. God of mercy, you have given us grace to pray with one heart and one voice and have promised to hear the prayers of two or three who agree in your name. Fulfill now, we pray, the prayers and longings of your people, as may be best for us and for your kingdom. Grant us in this world to know your truth, and in the world to come to see your glory. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Are the children coming?
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in prayer and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Whenever you drink it, or do this in remembrance of me, therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, O gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Saint David and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God are for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have led us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. Amen. He whose second coming in power and great glory we await, make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. And may you who rejoice in the first advent of our Lord Redeemer and his second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost descend upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the... Thank you. Anyone that has a birthday or a parent or an anniversary? This is for the birthday of two of our Sunday school children who have joined us for the past year and a half on Zoom every Sunday. Today is their sixth birthday. They are in Anaheim. Guess where they're going today. And <laughs> but what they wanted to do was to um, not miss Sunday school. So happy birthday to Noelle and Noella today. Well, glad to be here and uh, wonderful to be part of this. Yeah. It's my birthday. Sure. <laughs> Happy birthday. Everybody Do you have an announcement, Elaine? Something coming up we should know about? <laughs> First, please don't forget as you eat today to grab your shopping bag. This is for our annual, the 17th annual Bay Park food drive. Fill it with goodies. And you can either bring it back next Saturday, December 3rd, and drop it off in the parking lot. We'll have people out there collecting and sorting things. Or bring it to church on Sunday. And we will make sure it gets to Feeding San Diego. <clears throat> this is a, an event that started in a house across the street from St. David's. And then um, that couple moved into our rectory for a couple years. And, but what they've done is they've kept this going since it's a Bay Park food drive. We want you to all join in. <laughs> Not done. <laughs> this, this particular announcement in particular is actually from the Reverend Mother Susan Astorita. This particular Sunday, all of our clergy members were asked to talk to their parishes, and encourage members to come to the Good News Festival. <laughs> Steve and I are on that committee putting this together, and we've been actually working on it for two years. We had to cancel it last year, so it is taking place. We invite you to come join us on December 10th at the Town & Country Resort. It starts at 10 o'clock in the morning. There are all types of wonderful events coming on. <clears throat> 
we still need volunteers. You can sign up online, and I'll give you the information to get there. Um, we do need a church member to carry our banner in the procession for the revival. The revival is the big deal. It's in the evening. It starts at 6 o'clock, and it's open to all faith. That's the purpose of this, to bring them here. But here's the really big treat for next weekend. It, we're, you have an opportunity to see and hear in person our presiding bishop, Michael Curry. He will be here for the weekend. And also with him, the Reverend Dr. William Barber. And he is best known for all the work he does with poor people. Um, and again, you can learn more about each of them. And the last thing, I don't know if you heard, Voices of Our City Choir, but they won a golden buzzer on America's Got Talent. They're actually here from San Diego, and it's made up of homeless people. And they will be performing, and they are absolutely amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> so, any questions about the festival? Ask Steve and I. Yeah. Steve, did you have a question? <laughs> <laughs> It's free. We would like you to go online to register just because it helps us keep track of the numbers. Okay? And be <laughs> grand. Also, our, our bishop, Bishop Susan, will be signing her books. So if you'd like a copy of her book, or if you already have one and you'd like to get it signed, you can. Bill? Is she in a banner bearer? Yes. Okay, we got it. St. David's banner will be in the procession for the revival. Okay. Any questions? See us after church. Thank you. I want to point out we have Holden Evening Prayer. It's a beautiful little prayer service on the first, second, and fourth Sundays or Mondays of Advent. So starting tomorrow at 5.30, we have Holden Evening Prayer, and it's just a short, about 25 or 30 minute long prayer service. Also, and you'll see this on the back of your bulletin on uh, 11, on the December 11th, we're having a sing-along, and I'm compiling just a whole bunch of holiday songs, Christmas songs, and stuff, and we're just inviting the neighborhood and people to come and sing through it. I'm going to sit here with my keyboard and sing through these songs, and I hope a bunch of you want to show up and do that. It's kind of like a combination of a concert and caroling thing, so I hope that everybody can come to that. And Joy Wolf, Senior Warden, thank you once again, Andrew. We appreciated you coming and speak with us today. It's so nice to have a seminary student, one of our seminary students, coming and speak. Thank you, Andrew. Wanted to make sure we did that. And uh, there are so many announcements. The purple sheet in your bulletin has all the events going on with Advent. Mother Susan also asked to have us note the spiritual journey, journaling writing that she's going to be leading. It's on Zoom, so it should be a nice new addition to our season. The first one is this Wednesday. Uh, the Also, please note that Jeff Watkins, whose life we celebrated last week, his plaque is in the Memorial Garden, if you wanted to see it now. It's up in the Memorial Garden. And next Sunday is our Stewardship Inn gathering. If you haven't had a chance to submit your uh, pledge card, please do so. But also join us when we show our dedication for and love for St. David's next week. And I think those are all the announcements. <laughs>